waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. All right, some stations join us in the second and third hour. Ultra important Ukraine news. Headline out of CNBC, Russia wants to start World War III. I mean, this is getting crazy. So I'm going to break that down. Take your calls coming up. But we wouldn't just cover this if it was Glenn Beck just saying this, but he's saying it off White House talking points, Media Matters talking points that he originated. So for anybody that's trained in, in, in tracking psyops and stuff, now it all clicked for me. Why he says I want him arrested and put in a camp. He said that a week and a half ago. We played the bizarre clip. Why he says I want violence. Why he says InfoWars wants violence. Is covering up the racism of Clive and Bundy that we were there and knew about this. Within hours of us seeing it, we had him on and covered it and said the way it was spun is terrible. We're all about fighting racism here. Real, real racism. You know, divide and conquer. And to have him do this, David, uh, bottom line, what's your analysis on this? Because this is really dangerous. Well, the bottom line is the best thing you could say about Glenn Beck is that he just doesn't know what's going on. He's totally uninformed and doesn't care, and he's spinning things. I don't think that's what's happening. Rush has talked about the drive-by media. We saw that happen out there. I would say that Glenn Beck is the comfy couch media. You know, at best case, if you're listening to him, you don't think that he's an FBI shill. The best you can say about him is that he's an Obama FBI away. shill. <laughs> that's right. The best you can say is he's setting half a continent away. He doesn't have any reporters out there. He's not reading any of the facts. He's totally misconstruing everything. I don't think that's what's happening. The day after this happened, he had seven talking points going in and defending Harry Reid, defending the BLM, ignoring the fact that they were pointing snipers uh, at unarmed people all week. And, and they, tasering and police dogging and saying, we'll shoot you. And Americans finally stood up and, and peacefully stood against it. But we yeah. didn't even have any guns. A few people did. And now we're leading it. Exactly. Now, I mean, I was there saying no violence, no violence you know, over the radio. You were there yeah. covering it. And now he's lying about me. So they set me up. People go, well, he got what he deserved. Yeah. He's used everything he can to assassinate the character of Clive and Bundy and assassinate our character. And as Jesse Ventura said, I don't know if it was his original expression. Or not. First, they assassinate your character, then they assassinate you. No, it was that's Gandhi. Always, it was Gandhi. Okay, that's what Gandhi said. Okay, that that. But that's the technique that they use. And he, he wants to uh, compare himself to Gandhi. He's really a quizzling. He is really selling out. He's not. He's movie. totally handled. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. What he is is a soci. He's a sociopath. Yeah. yeah. He thinks like doing whatever he wants makes him a winner, not in God's eyes. That's right. If he had even read his book on Agenda 21, I'm sure he had somebody ghostwrite it for him. He would have understood what was going on there as part of many different aspects. There's a lot of different aspects. There's crony capitalism, there's corruption, there's Agenda 21, there's an out-of-control police state. He has ignored and talked against all those as if he were the New York Times or as if he were the Southern Poverty Well, Law it's in the BLM the documents that they wanted Bundy's land for the environmental easement. Yes. Yes. Where they say, we can build on this and we have this as an easement. And they go, oh, we're lying. And we said we lied about the bullets. Well, he laughed at Bundy on the Monday night show and said, oh, you're going back to the 1860s to try to support your argument. When the BLM confiscated land in Texas, confiscated that farmer's land, they went back to the 1803 Louisiana Purchase. What Bundy is doing is going back to the Constitution. The oldest thing in land is the most powerful. Exactly. Look, Rick Perry says he'll go kick the feds off if they're trying to grab land. Well, what, is Rick Perry an extremist now? Of course, they did the same thing in Nevada to a man who's part of the Shoshone Indian tribe. You know, and as Russell Means pointed out, he said, every treaty we've had with the U.S. government, they've broken. Your treaty with the U.S. government is the Constitution, and they're breaking it now. As this book, uh, Where White Men Fear to Tread. That's exactly what's going on here. What they've done to the Indians and the reservations is what they want to do to everybody. And that video is called Welcome to the Reservation. If you guys can find that, it's like an hour long. He, he died last year, an amazing individual. Again, you meet him, he's totally different than what the media said he was. It's incredible how they distort who people are. And that's what I realized. They're distorting who I am. Yes. MSNBC says I'm, MSNBC says I'm deeply racist. Beck says that now. Yes. With no proof. Yes. Because they want people that don't know who I am to think, oh... I don't listen to him. He's deeply racist. They always play the racist and the terrorist card. And the first person to play the terrorist card was Glenn Beck. He played it three days before Harry Reid said. Well, no, that's the thing is that is that 
with, with, with people like Glenn Beck on the supposed patriot movement, who needs the liberals? I mean, he literally is becoming Obama. Glenn Beck becomes Obama. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. He's the T-Rex of political talk. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, we're here discussing history. Discussing the present, the future, looking at legislation, looking at global trends, giving you the good news, the bad news, and the, quite frankly, over-the-top, insane, sensational news that only reality can bring you. I have been radicalized by reality. I have been radicalized by first being on the air in 1995, when almost no one was really using the Internet, and covering government documents dealing with... Pentagon bases in upstate New York where they were producing goats that were part spider to create Spider-Man-like body armor out of their milk. And I would cover it off of scientific journals that I would get at the library and people would say I was a liar. And then suddenly scientists and journalists and engineers would hear my show and send me trade journals and things of even more insane things. Now, by 96, 97, the Internet got bigger, more stuff was on it. Uh, but I got frustrated by the fact that things like that and hundreds of other things were real, but people thought I was a crazy conspiracy theorist for talking about it. 
now everyone knows about goats that are part spider. There's been thousands of news articles about it. I, I mean, I've been at dinner parties and told people that 15, 20 years ago, you could buy in Hong Kong glowing rhesus monkeys that glow in the dark. Because I was sent trade publications on that. Back then, they cost a half million dollars. Now they cost $5,000 last time I saw. I'm tempted to buy one, but that gives money to the abuse of practice of cross-species engineering. Do you know what the genetic engineers have said on my broadcast about this? There's, at any time, this is going to give rise to superbugs. It may have already done it and cause zoological diseases to jump into humans. And is so deadly dangerous, it'll make your head spin. And I'm only telling you about one, one, let's be conservative, hundred thousandth of what's going on. The pharmacological crops. I remember reading an AP article back in 2002 about protegen in Texas with open air crops in Kansas and other areas that had live HIV growing in the corn. And I read it and said, isn't it that frightening? It could, it could jump into humans. It could become airborne. And they had people in spacesuits out after I reported off the AP, because I said this could be dangerous, out burning it all over Kansas and Texas and one other state. And it was in the news, local news, that guys in spacesuits were out burning it from the federal government. Actual government helicopters landed and burned it. So I got to say, the government actually does good sometimes. I pointed out that Dr. Pianca was at a presentation, the, one of the heads of the biology department at UT, and said he wants uh, airborne Ebola to be released to kill 90% of us, and that he and his family are ready to die. And I pointed out that he and his undergraduates were working on uh, stuff like that. And I quoted some of his undergraduates and that have become PhDs, doctors, and them saying we need to get rid of all humans. The FBI visited him. That was in the Austin American Statesman. So I don't think the government's our enemy. It's just a complex system that has corporate and other interests controlling it. We need to get control of it. Now, there it is. Uh, Dr. Doom, Eric Bianca, received standing ovation from Texas Academy of Science and then uh, gets a visit from the FBI. And I said the FBI should visit him. The FBI did. The FBI is a diverse organization run by Eric Holder right now, so that's, that's why you see them demonizing gun owners and shipping guns into Mexico with the ATF to blend the Second Amendment. But, but I'm going to get into the Ukraine situation. It's just that I don't make stuff up is my point. Every once in a while, I get things wrong, and I admit when I get things wrong, I wish I was wrong about all this. It's not fun to have White House run CNN, MSNBC, Media Matters, saying I'm deeply racist with no proof, and that I'm violent, and I want to kill cops, and I want a war. They're saying that so cops start thinking I'm a bad guy, so when they set me up, nobody comes to my aid. I'm being set up. But that's part of the mission. I mean, look. I will say it again. One of my grandfathers was a fighter pilot, crash landed, almost died in World War II. My other grandfather flew B-17s. Before that, he flew Liberator flying coffins out of North Africa. Once they got him into Italy, he was in B-17s. He got sunstroke uh, in a mission, and then the next mission, or two missions later, his whole crew got blown up and died. To give you an example of how, how I barely survived. And, and, and my point of using that analogy is, they knew when they were flying into flat clouds, that was the factories they had to bomb. I know when I get enemy attacks that I'm over the target. So if I get killed or set up, let's just get one thing straight. You didn't have a victory over me, New World Order. I knew what I was climbing into. I knew the cockpit I was getting into. I am steering into the flak. The more I get, the more I know I'm on target. So I, I, I just want everybody to understand that, that I'm in this to win it. I'm not in this because I'm a narcissist. I'm not in this because I want a big name for myself. I am in an absolute war that I know is real. I've committed my full life to it. And I feel like I'm not doing a good enough job to fight these tyrants. I believe in humanity and I'm committed. And I want to believe in other libertarian talk show hosts. I want to believe in you. I want to beat these people. I want a better world. I want to uphold my family name.
I want to be honorable. I want to look at the facts and try to give you the most reasoned, historical, morally based analysis I can. And I'm impure myself.